Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, May 6, 2021, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. It looks like we're getting more and more people each week finding the show. If you need to register, DaveLander.com slash webinar, even if the date is old, which I think this week it was, it'll be there. And usually, should I remember, I have it posted on my website on Thursday. Everything's just been crazy, crazy, crazy. That's why we move the shows to nighttime, and then it's still crazy. All right, what are we talking about? Well, current market conditions, obviously, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them to the slides just so my ADD doesn't kick in. And then once we get to the live charts, feel free to ask about anything you want. That's some free form uh, deal. Also, hold off on your stock picks just in case. And tonight I want to talk about shite coins. And that goes along the lines of the church and what's happening now. A couple of days ago, I started working a presentation, a lot of which I'm going to show you tonight for stockcharts.com. And everything wasn't um, fantastic in the markets. Everything was good, like on Monday, and then things kind of were kind of so so on Tuesday. And it looks like we're back to the church of what's happening now. And I'll show you all that in just one second. But I really think it's a it's a tremendous opportunity, at least right now. So we'll get to all that in just one second. And I want to talk briefly about second chance buy these. I took a, a, a setup as I talked about in the Facebook group, and I called it a second chance buy at B, and there are some things that happen there. And I want to show you a case where all you have to do is follow the plan. There's a little bit more to it than meets the eye there. There's a disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading as often. Sum it up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then, borrowing a line from my buddy, Greg Morris. So all you have to do is follow the plan. I put all you have to do in quotes, and those of you who have been more than one show probably know the story or stories, but my wife's always like, all you got to do is this one little thing and just fix this and you know, just get your wrench out and tighten that little screw up on that faucet and it'll stop leaking. Fortunately, we bought a brand new house. You know, we don't have to worry about these things as much anymore, but usually what'll happen is three hours later, I'm covered with water and I'm two or three trips at a hardware store. My wife one time went into the plumbing store once and she said, I need two of everything you've got in here. <laughs> anyway, all you have to do is follow the plan. So this is one that was set up recently in the trading service, a little bit of a pullback in the IPO, one of my favorite patterns. Triggers an entry right around 20 and change. I'll pull the spreadsheet in a minute and show you exactly where it was. And we had a stop down here at 18. And as you can see, it dipped down to the stop, but it just nicely reversed and closed well without hitting that stop. And if we take a look at it in the portfolio, the entry was 20, just for uh, those who are keeping score. And the stop, I guess, was 17 and because it's three points away. And because it did rally a little bit, we did bump that stop to 18. As you can see, it was 18 coming into today and this snapshot this snapshot is actually live there's no change in the stop going in tomorrow and as you can see we've got a nice little profit there okay so all you have to do is follow the plan come on man is it really that easy well not quite exactly <laughs> so this is what it looked like coming into today this is a 15 minute chart so Come in, I come in and it gaps a little bit lower and drops pretty hard on the open. And my equity is looking pretty ugly on the open, especially when you combine this stock in there. And then it drops even further. So initially I'm like, darn. And now I'm thinking, you know what, Dave? You're a trader, right? Just, just get out the way. What if you just get out the way? You could always buy it back late. I'm like, hmm. Well, let me check where the service stop is. And... As I'm getting around to doing that, I notice that it continues to slide and sells off pretty hard. So I'm thinking, mother bother. And then I check in on the service and realize fairly early on that my stop was down around 18. So I'm stuck and my hands are tied. So in other words, the plan was laid out. The plan was to stop out at 18 because it was on the trading service. I have to I have to follow that plan. Now, a lot of times I'll get that monkey mind going in a trade that I'm in that's not in this trading service. So 
I feel like I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm Dave Landry, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of times that monkey mind will really get to me and I might get shaken out of a trade. But having that plan out there, having that plan out there in the client's hands makes me think, you know what, Dave, if you're going to give them a plan, you have to follow it too. So as it dropped further, I'm thinking shiitake mushrooms. And then something beautiful happened. It began a rally, and by the end of the day, reversed all those losses and actually ended up pretty nicely on the day, as you can see in the portfolio, which I'll show you once again toward the end of this presentation. Pretty impressive rally and a decent day in this particular stock. Now, do they always reverse right before they hit the stop? No. <laughs> Do they sometimes hit the stop and then reverse? Yes. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. So you see, all you have to do is follow the plan. And I'm being a little sarcastic there, obviously, a little facetious. Sarcasm, by the way, is my 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 second second favorite asm. You know what my first one is? Enthusiasm. All right, let's talk about second chances. Speaking of seconds, let's talk about second chance buy at these. So this is one I mentioned in the Facebook group recently. The symbol changed from VSPR to skin today. And I do have a little skin in the game, so to speak. So the original buy at B was here. I don't know why I didn't take the original one, but in hindsight, and, and obviously, as I was saying, like in tonight's service, there's no way to tell you why I didn't, why I, I, I got rid of or called out 2,000 stocks to find the one stock that I want to trade tomorrow or the few stocks that I want to trade tomorrow. And so I, there's no way to know why I called it out, but I'm pretty sure that I know it was thin and I know that the range wasn't really that big. It's only about a one point range. And back then, it was an acquisition company. So, ah, I just got to fill. <laughs> the range was somewhat narrow and the volume was pretty low except for that particular day in question. And on that buy at B day, it did have good volume, but the volume back here was really, really thin. Now, a second chance buy at B would have been here. I don't know why I didn't take that trade. And there's, I mean, there's no way of knowing in hindsight, right? But that buy at B failed miserably. And a few days ago, I noticed that it began to rally. And I put in a Facebook group that it was a second chance buy at B. Now, one thing I found with the buy at B, especially if I got a lot of positions on, sometimes I need to get in a little early. And I think this was about 20 minutes before the close. And it was trading fairly strongly. And I felt like it had the potential to keep on going. So I went ahead and got in a little early. And usually I'll mention something before I get in, but this was all happening really quick and I had a lot of positions to deal with. But I thought it was worth a chance as a as a second chance buy a D. And then as I was putting this presentation together, I realized that actually the second chance buy a D would have been here. But anyway, the point I'm making is sometimes these buy a Bs fail miserably, but then the company gets their act together, or more than likely, the euphoria comes back in. So as I said a minute ago, sometimes these acquisition companies, these SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, some people call them SPACs. I call them SPACs because it sounds cooler, I think, than SPACs. <laughs> you can call them what you want. You can call me what you want. Just don't call me late for dinner, right? Anyways, or anyway, the buy it be sometimes will just fail miserably, but what will happen is, again, the euphoria will come back in on a stock, and sometimes it becomes the real deal. Sometimes with these second signals or second chance signals, whatever you want to call them, it's kind of like the early bird may get the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese type of situation. So I would encourage you to keep an eye out for that second chance by these Keep an eye out for new closing highs and IPOs. Very, very powerful pattern. The most simplest thing you could ever possibly do. 
Lawrence says, thanks for your mentoring and IPO course. You are welcome, Lawrence. Thanks for being a client. Appreciate it. Now, the stock rallied up, and the next day, I kind of felt like it was a gift horse. And the stop, my stop wasn't really that wide on this particular one because the range wasn't that wide. And it rallied up enough to where I figured, hey, you know what? This is a gift horse. I'm one day into this position, not even 24 hours into the position, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and lock in half of my profits. And when I grabbed the slide, it had reversed on the day. I'm not sure where we ended up on this one. So that's the second chance IPO type of setup. I would encourage you to study the buy a B, learn it, learn all the caveats, lots and lots of caveats. $20 rule, which I guess now we'll go ahead and make it somewhat official. It's a $30 rule. Ideally, you want them to be less than $30. If they're more than $30, look for Landry Light on the five-day SMA. And we've talked about that. I put a post out in the Facebook group, so look for that post there. And then you could also look on my website for things I put on IPOs for that particular pattern. I don't have a name for it. All right, let's talk a little bit about profit centers. This is something I've been talking about quite a bit lately. And again, these are ancillary profitable techniques. And I got the word profit center from Linda Rasky. She talked about in her book, Trading Sardines, which I think my wife came in here and cleaned up. Thank God. But uh, I used to have it handy. Anyway, it's a great book. I suggest that I would suggest that you read it. And profit centers, like she would, somebody would approach her with, "Hey, I've got this idea," and she's like, "Well, let's model it out, see what it looks like, and if it works, we'll make we'll make it a profit center. We'll actually throw a little money at it, and it'll be an ancillary way to make money." Well, I'm kind of taking that technique, this is something outside of the core methodology. I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse on this. And it could be also be in like a non-correlated market. So I'm doing a little bit of both of those things right now in the shite coins, and I'll show you that in just one second. Now, there is a shiny object syndrome problem when it comes to profit centers. And again, I know I talked about a lot of this in, in, in uh, yesterday's stock charts presentation, so I want to get through it real quick. But you really, you can't take your eyes off the prize. And, and in cases... Uh, especially early on with these cryptocurrencies and some of these other markets that might be kind of exciting, even opening gap reversals or something that we like to trade, some of these ancillary profit centers, you get really excited about them. And then sometimes you forget where the real money is, okay? And eventually a profit center does have the potential to be a, a really big profit center, okay? Maybe these these shite coins won't just fizzle out like a lot of people are poo-pooing them and say they will. I think they're here to stay, but we'll see. But for now, it's definitely a church of what's happening now. But again, you got to be careful. I've missed many setups that turned out to be really great winners. And why? I don't know. Maybe I was spending too much energy on something else, as I often talk about. And it's the, this line of reasoning comes from Scott Adams and other people have talked about it too, obviously. But really, life is about management of energy. And one thing lately, just I've been so busy and there's so much going on. And so many projects and presentations and getting stretched a little thin that I've got to be careful with these profit centers and I've got to be careful like with things like the intraday ETF trading and it's like a week ago I was just coming in every day every day every day and it was I don't want to say it was like the Jimmy Rogers money lying in the corner, but it was pretty close. It was almost like, wow, this trading thing is easy. I know, haha, whenever you think that, <laughs> get ready. And then the last few days, it's been really choppy. It's been a two sided market. And I think I lost one day. I made really good profits one day, but then I lost like 75% of them by the close. And on that particular day, in, in particular, I remember being exhausted. And today, my shoulders are a little tight. Overall, I made a little bit of money, but it wasn't really worth it compared to where I was. So you've got to really be careful with these profit centers or any type of ancillary trading outside of your core methodology. Once you have something that you truly believe in, something you've been doing for 10 or 20 or 25 years, I guess in my case, then you, you really need to stick to that. And that's where the money is. But we are traders. We do have a brain in our head. We know how to trade markets. We know how the euphoria comes in. We know that an emerging market like these shite coins can just have this emotions that are running rampant, okay? 
then we can go in there and trade that because we have that knowledge. Yeah, like George just pointed out, the core methodology is not having setups. I've been having a hard time finding setups lately, and that used to really bother me, especially because I'm putting it out there for clients, and I know that clients are, are paying for products, so to speak, but it doesn't bother me anymore. As I've said a thousand times, just in case there's somebody new here tonight or new on YouTube watching, years ago, way back in the trading market days, they had salespeople, and this was in the late 90s, and if I would go in and if I would not recommend anything, they would start losing a lot of clients. The clients would drop like flies. And the salespeople who were on commission only, I guess, at the time, they would call me up and they're like, Dave, you got to recommend something. You know, so I felt all this pressure. And then eventually I said, you know, I've, I've got to be true to form. If I'm not going to trade anything, you're not going to trade anything. And what was surprising is I've watched my sales come in. And when I didn't recommend anything, the sales would drop sharply. When I recommended crappy stocks, okay, I didn't think they were crappy at the time. I thought they were good stocks, obviously, but they didn't work out and my performance was poor. I actually lost much, much fewer clients during that time. And that told me right there that a lot of people are just trading for action. So anyway, this is a spreadsheet I grabbed last minute. This is the same, present, uh, same slide from yesterday. But I updated as of today, and you can see that we've got one in here up 456%, $20,000 on a hypothetical $100,000 account, although I do take these trades and I do have similar share sizes based on my account sizes. So I do have these gains, and if you see a loss in here, which you occasionally will, I have those losses too. <laughs> By the way, if you go to www.davelandry dot com slash i'll have to put it in post fix this in post i think it's trading service dash faq you can get the frequently asked questions and, and a lot of this stuff will be explained in there especially when it comes to the landry list and tracking the spreadsheet and things like this anyway here's one that's up 100 percent academy sports and here's another one not doing too bad today notwithstanding zim pulled back a little bit today but it's 40 percent and I forgot to put the date over here, but we haven't been in this one very long, like less than a month, I think. It definitely triggered back in April. So the point I was trying to make by showing that spreadsheet is you don't want, George says, wow. Yeah, it's always that great, George. We're always up that much. <laughs> I wish, if that was true, you'd never see my fat ass again. But yeah, we've had a pretty good run as of late. And I'm gonna keep on keeping, keeping on. I lost my train of thought, but... Um, COVID brain, it'll come back. <laughs> so like I was saying, it, you, you've got to be careful with the management of energy and that you're not getting sucked in too many directions. And like George says, there's not a whole lot of setups in the core methodology right now, and that's perfectly fine. And maybe that will allow us to spend a little bit more time in some of these profit centers. And, and again, you've got to be careful not to get sucked in too much. It is, It can't be a shiny object type of syndrome. Now, as I've said before, all coins are backed by absolutely nothing, just like the US dollar, the British pound, Japanese yen, pretty much every currency in the world, I think now is uh, a fiat currency. Fiat means backed by nothing, backed by the government. <laughs> What's that worth? But uh, here's a hundred trillion dollar note I found cleaning the garage. All my currencies are in the garage right now. I think that's not a good place. It's probably not a good place for them. My old office had lots of office space it was literally almost probably 10 times bigger than where I am now, at least five times bigger. Anyway, I found one of these hundred trillion dollar notes and this is how rampant their inflation is and how worthless their dollar is. In fact, uh, Ian McActivy, uh, rest in peace, great guy. Uh, he gives funny uh, presentations. I, he's inspired me to try to be funny in my presentations. Nowhere near as funny as him, but he would come up with the funniest stuff. But he showed in one of his presentations, he was he's a gold bug. He was a co-founder of the CEF, which I think is a Canadian gold fund or something. It's it's called something else now, but he was one of the co-founders. So he was definitely a gold bug. Anyway, long story endless, he, in one of his presentations, showed a, a sign outside of a South African bathroom. And I have it in one of, I think I have it in my article on Bitcoin on my website. And I'll put a link to that in post also. And basically the sign was, you know, going through 
what you can, you know, don't don't throw in in the uh, in the toilets. And it was like obviously newspapers and stuff and all. And one of the things on the list was Zim notes, Zimbabwe notes. The Zimbabwe notes are so worthless they don't want you wiping your butt with them. Okay. Uh, what are these all coins? I have no freaking idea. Okay. When I first started getting into them, let me keep signed in to my brokerage over here in case I need to do something. When I first started getting into them, I found myself thinking, okay, well, I, I, I get what Bitcoin is and I understand like Ethereum a little bit, but let me try to figure out what these things are. And then I realized, you know, you're just doing the same thing you did, as I've said ad nauseum, back when you first got into stocks and when i first got into stocks i used to spend the weekend in a library looking at what do you call those things value line or something like that i forget what they're called and i would look at the company and look at the earnings and try to figure out the balance sheet and all that other stuff you know got an mba let me let me see if i could use it to help me trade stocks well i think you'd be better off getting a degree in psychology as opposed to an mba and uh, if you really wanted to get smart with trading maybe a little neurology too wouldn't hurt Anyway, instead of trying to figure out everything about them, just buy the ones that go up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. And that's the old Will Rogers saying, but that's what you have to do with these things or any other gosh darn market for that matter. It's a wild, wild west. These things are crazy, crazy, crazy. I sent one of you guys a picture of one that I was in, and we'll take a look at it in just one second. I think it was up 45% at the time, and I'd gotten in it just recently. And he, he wasn't nearly enough impressed, but oh well. It, come on, man, if this doesn't impress you, once you get to the charts, you ain't a trader, right? Uh, don't trade more than you can afford to lose. Money management, money management, money management is what I would suggest. And I am, I, cash is not trash. As I preach with the money management, as you know, we're going in for that short-term trade and we're pulling off shares, okay? And I'm going to show you the, the open positions I have right now that are free rolling, so to speak, where I'm kind of playing with the market's money. And all I have to do I know, haha, is sit back and relax and see what happens. And of course, hackers are working really hard to steal your coins. And, you know, maybe we could talk about this in the Facebook group. I don't know if there's enough time in this forum. But uh, I know some of you guys are using cold wallets or off offline wallets and all, and that just seems like a really big hassle. And I know that you know, I know enough to make me dangerous as far as the securities involved and all. But it just seems a lot easier to me as a trader to have them in your brokerage account. And I know that there are certain dangers to that, so that does scare me a little bit. And that's something that I'm sure we need to probably explore a little bit further. The reason I'm saying these things is buyer beware, okay? Now, keep in mind that everything works better with trend. If you're looking at my methodology or something like Landry-like pullbacks, which I'm going to skim over here in just a second, and the market's trending really nicely, you're going to say, this guy is great, you know? <laughs> Some guy came up to me <laughs> late 90s. Hey, man, that pullback thing you invented put two of my daughters through college. I'm like, I, I didn't invent the pullback. I just kind of got excited about him and started trading him anyway so something to keep in mind trend following in all coins same as trend following in any other market right with a few good caveats but you can do pullbacks tkos generic pullbacks landry light pullbacks which i'm going to show you here in one second now relative strength and breakouts work but only in runaway momentum markets and as i've said quite a bit i've got one client and he's paid for two down payments on investments properties by taking my Landry list, that's my stock setup list for each day, and just staying in the top ones, but that's only like in runaway momentum markets. He didn't do it two consecutive years, he did it, and then it wasn't working as well, so he backed off for a while, and then all of a sudden we get a runaway momentum market again, and he did it again. So it can be done, but again, everything works better in trends, everything works better with trend, and everything works better when you're in, obviously, a momentum market. Now, I'm not a big fan of breakouts because they have a high failure rate. But if you're in an inefficient or emerging market, 
such as IPOs early in the process, and even not so early in the process, but that buy at B is a breakout pattern, one of the few and only breakout patterns that I'll trade. And there might be another breakout pattern that I might add to my repertoire, if that's the right word, and I'll show you that in just one second. But breakouts do have a high failure rate, but I think they're okay to do. In fact, sometimes you can just buy these things that are going straight up, believe it or not, a little scary way to trade, and I'll show you that again in just one second. So I'm going to go over this quickly because we talk about them quite often. You can use a 20 or 30-day EMA. I fell in love with the 20-day EMA many, many years ago. I know you probably want to party with me. And uh, 19, I wrote the article, I think, in 95. I think I got published in early 96 or late 95. I forget exactly when. But old enough to make me an OFAR, right? And it was a 220 EMA breakout system. And all I was doing was looking for a breakout above the 20-day exponential moving average. You could find it on the, on the internet. You used to have to pay $1.99 for it, but I think that enough people have passed it around to where it's out there somewhere. So I'm not, not giving it away. It's just out there, okay? You could find it. 220 EMA breakout system. And I had set out to prove, by the way, that something simple could work as a trend-following system in something like Japanese Yen. And that was one of my favorite markets back then. Anyway, so I did a lot of work with the 20-day EMA, and if you go in and read lay the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks, then you can, you'll see that I use a 20-day EMA for what I call Kiss My Goodbye, but now I call it Landry Like Pullbacks, and the 30-day has been my favorite as of late. Now, one's not better than the other, like in trading, and I guess I'll call it trading. Everything's a trade-off. The 20 days is going to give you more signals, maybe less reliable, but you might catch some moves that the 30 misses because maybe the market won't pull back deep enough. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to sit around and wait for the moving average to actually be touched all the time because I might get a TKO above the moving average, or I might have one of my other patterns setting up above the moving average, and I'll go ahead and just trade that pattern, and I'll flesh that out in just one second. So again, uh, you need some Landry light, at least 10 days of Landry light. If the market's accelerating, maybe even fewer days. If the market's kind of gradually trending, 20 days would be nice. And then the market pulls back to kiss the moving average. You want to enter if the trend begins to resume. People are asking me a lot of, about parameters, and it, it, it doesn't fit into a neat little package, a little mechanical package. My trading is discretionary. But use some common sense above a two bar high. If the market closes really poorly, maybe right above that high, kind of like a textbook TKO type of trade. Do a search on TKOs on my website if you want to get the TKOs. So this is what it looks like in Bitcoin. Bitcoin had a lot of beautiful Landry light pullbacks at the 30 along the way. As you can see, there was one way back there at 15,000. I seem to remember them long before that, but 15,000 to 30,000, that's a double, better than a poke in the eye. And then there was one around 45,000, and I think it ran 60 and change off of that one. Little money management, taking partial profits and stops would help to let you capture a little money on that last leg there. And as you can see in the bottom, this is through the ACP platform, which I'll mention in just one second. I'm also gonna use TradingView just because that's something that I've been using before ACP got all the altcoins, I kind of bugged the good folks over at stockcharts.com to add some altcoins, and now they have 150 altcoins. They have more altcoins than I know how to trade. <laughs> Not that I know how to trade, I just can't find a brokerage for some of the ones I really like over there. So I just kind of, it's kind of interesting. Be careful what you wish for. Now they have all these coins that, that it's like, oh, I love this, but where could I find a broker to trade it? Anyway, so you can see the little sawtooth pattern down below. This is Landry Light in, in ACP, the stock charts ACP platform. It just counts the number of days the stock is above the 30-day EMA or whatever EMA you want to use in this indicator. And as I often preach, indicators really don't in, indicate anything. If they did, you'd own the world if you had one that indicated, right? They illustrate what's already in the chart. So I could eyeball this chart even without a moving average or anything and say, oh, it's in a trend, it's pulled back. So it, in fact, it's like a TKO right here. That looks kind of interesting, right? The moving average just kind of helps you to visualize it. It helps to illustrate, not indicate, but illustrate what's there. 
And then take it one step further, the little histogram at the bottom of the Landry light helps you even more. And Landry light is also in Metastock and it might be in some other packages. So kind of exciting to see my name when you pull up the, the list of indicators. So I, I'm a nerd, but pretty excited. So this one is an example of a Landry light pullback. It's also a TKO, but you can see that it began to accelerate nicely higher. This is AMP. You know what they do? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't care. And you can see it pulled back to kiss the moving average. And I just pulled up my trades earlier. I got in here at 52 or 55, I forget exactly where. And I literally flipped some out about 20 minutes before I went live because I had a pretty good profit here. I didn't want to let it erode. And I wanted to show that I am doing the proper money management in here. By the way, the ones that I have flagged, I am long, okay? And it's, uh, again, May 6, 2021, 632, 633, Central Time, 7.33, obviously Eastern. And, you know, check back often, but this is likely to change fairly quickly. But every one I have in green, I have hit the initial profit target and I'm trailing a stop on. So hopefully, I know you said hope, but hopefully next week I'll be long EOS, ETC, USD, ETC, XBT, Metic, XDG, and these other ones will be green too, but we'll see. The thing about the altcoins is it changes quickly. And uh, I was talking with one of you guys last week or week before, or even before that, and you said that, uh, Whenever you feel like you want to go out and buy a new car from your altcoin accounts, you uh, you probably should uh, should go sell some of those altcoins and maybe buy a new car. And then uh, John Z, you're here tonight. John said he took his profits recently. He's I don't know if he's still there or not, but he took his profits recently and took the family to Disney World. I guess he took the family. Um, anyway, so... You could trade breakouts, especially doing high relative strength markets. I think we're in a high relative strength market now. Uh, the bloom may be off the rose. We'll get to that in just one second. But the doggy coin, which is a completely made up coin, and who cares if it goes up, right? Notice that it mostly held the 30 EMA. You can kind of eyeball this. Or if you look down here, you can see mostly green. We only had two bars of red. So even though it lost momentum was trading sideways, it was for the most part hanging in there. Now, again, I'm not a big breakout player, but if you come over here and it's high in relative strength, and this is not live to this bar here or here, I should say, but you get the idea. So if it's way up there, then maybe that breakout might be worth trading. And the other thing you could do is just simply make sure you're in the top X amount of altcoins, okay? And I'll show you which ones I'm long. And fortunately, some of those are still super high on the list. So in a case like this, again, you could buy that breakout, okay? A little EMA breakout. The, the price is pulling away from that EMA. You're getting a little Landry light in between the EMA and the low of the price bar. Or you could just simply look at the relative strength on the right side. All right, let's go shitcoin hunting. There's the trades right there, in case you're wondering. I don't have the AMP in there. My AMP is with another brokerage. This brokerage I don't think has AMP. But you can see I took some, what's today, 5-1. Oh, this is like, um, this is like page two of the fills. But you can see, anyway, these are some of the recent fills. And you can see I took profits in Ethereum, uh, Ethereum Classic at 44.96. And if we go down here, where was I buying that ETC? Looks like I was, nope, I was selling at 30. Sell, 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 buy. But you can see I'm pretty active in here. Here we go, I was buying it at 32. I sold half at 44, so it's 10 points. Better than the poke in the eye on that one, for instance. And we'll take a look at the, some of those trades. All right, let's shift gears. Let's go over to the browser. Okay, just to show you real quick, these are the ones that I'm currently long, okay? And again, the ones that are green, I took profits on. There's the AMP. Okay. And you know, it's kind of interesting in trading. The second you make a decision, right, then the market changes and then 
you either regret that decision or feel pretty good. And usually, if you keep watching that screen, you'll regret the decision. So I sold at 72, and it immediately shot up to 0.072, I should say, 72. Yeah, you wouldn't see my fat ass, right? Again, 0.08, and then it came back in. No, I would, I would hang out to talk to you a second time. So EOS, this is one I don't remember exactly where I got in this one. But if memory serves, it was on this breakout bar here. And I wasn't necessarily playing the breakout as much as I was watching the percent change over here. Ethereum Classic, and this is one I had buys way back here, uh, this little pullback here. And when we do, we're gonna search for some new ones in one second, so just hang in there. But we had a nice little pullback. I got long here, and what was cool about getting long back here is that there was, it was high in relative strength, okay? So you could just blindly buy the highest one in the relative strength, the highest uh, set of pairs, or especially, or, or even better, I should say, look for some sort of setup and then look for like a breakout within that setup. So that's kind of the best of both worlds. And then one thing I've been experiment with, experimenting with lately, he tried to say, is these pairs matched again against like Bitcoin. Bitcoin was kind of weak lately, but these uh, shite coins were doing really well, especially Ethereum Classic, ETC. And so I went in and on this little breakout here, I got in a little bit late, as you can see, but it was high in relative strength. It's going straight up. And it's a little scary buying these markets going straight up. What you can do is maybe change, just buy them, okay? Close your eyes and buy them. And then look, drill down to like a 15 minute chart or something and put in a relatively tight stop. If it keeps on going, then you're gonna end up with a trade that looks like this, okay? Before you know it, you're flipping them out 100% higher, okay? If it doesn't work, you just lose a little bit of money, okay? So Matic, another one of these type of coins that just absolutely took off. I don't remember exactly what I got in, but if I had to guess, I would say it's back here somewhere when it was really, really high in relative strength. And Doggy Coin was actually high in relative strength, but it was also a textbook type of setup. My entry was at 0.30 based on this pullback here. And by the way, what I'll do when I start seeing a textbook setup is in the Facebook group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders, I'll start putting those in. You do have to be invited to join the group. The best way to get to get an invitation would be to become at least a gold member of DaveLandry.com. So it's a free group, but you need to be invited. Okay, so if we go to the RS list, now again, it might be a little late to just hop into these now, but you could see that ETC XBT is up 50% round numbers. Same thing with ETC US dollar. Now, when I say the bloom is off the rose, what I mean is you can see that it's coming off a little bit. And quantum, I wanted to buy some quantum, and I don't think I have any. Let me just check this one way. I have most of my positions on. I don't think I have any, simply because everything else was doing so well, I didn't have any room to buy any more. EOS. Another one that's green, you can see nice little breakout there. We just talked about that one, I believe. Now this one might be, you know, it's a little scary, but this one might be worth going in for right now. Okay, let me see if I have any of that. OMG, I do not think I have any. I'll have to check another brokerage, but I can't really do that right now on the fly. But that'd be kind of cool to do, see what happens. Okay, so at 12.22, 12.22, and uh, it's, uh, what time is it? 6:41, 7:41 Eastern PM, 5 6, 2021. So let's just see what happens, okay? And like I said a second ago, we'll put in like a 15-minute chart. And I wish I'd had broker over here. I could uh, put it in. So let's say you just buy it now at 12:23, uh, right? We'll put it a stop like at 11:80 or something, okay? And if it takes off, fine. If it stops you out, who cares, right? It's going to be such a small loss. It's it's not even going to matter. Now, keep in mind, we're not betting the form on these things, okay? Amp we talked about. Now, let me just show you something. These these Sometimes these coins scrape bottom, especially these newer ones, and then they begin to take off. I do not trade them. Actually, I got burned a couple times trying to bottom fish during this 
doing this uh, relative strength game. So I'm not as excited about something that's that's coming off its bottom, at least not just yet. Maybe longer term, a transitional setup like a bow tie or something like that, something we use for like gold or uh, other commodities coming off of major, major lows or commodity related stocks. Okay. But my lesson lately has been let's not bottom fish in these things at all, even if they're breaking out and high on ERS lists. Let's wait for them to set up. Okay. So as you can see, I'm long quite a few of these that are high up on the list, knock on wood. Now, let's just flip through them real quick and see if we can find anything worthwhile. And in doing this, I, it, sometimes it's it's good for me to do this because I can think out loud and you guys can see my uh, thinking on these things. Okay. So that would be high on the RS list, but you can see it's tailed off. Like I said, the bloom may be off the rose for now. It's a little wide and loose too. This one's not really set up. I prefer something with a little bit more, a little less wide and loose and a little more trend higher, but technically, yeah, it's had a nice run higher and it's pulled back a little bit. Let's see if we can find something a little bit better. ADA is one that can trend nicely at times, but it's been wide and loose, but you can see it was a breakout type of market. And I don't want to show you too much in hindsight. Let's just see if we can find some stuff in real time. This one's kind of wide and loose. And see, quite a few, of the, quite a few of these now are a wide and loose. Seems like when I when I got heavily into these things, I've been trading crypto for about three years. But when I I didn't get into a lot of these altcoins until more recent times. But it seems like back then everything was going straight up. Now it seems like your market selection is becoming a little bit more important. I'm long this one, but you can see it's trending nicely. If it pulls back a little bit more deeply, I think it'd be worth a shot as a new position and let's see if we could find something that's a little bit more textbook in nature there's a new one just came out today obviously nothing to do there one thing you might do and i think one of you guys in the group facebook group has been doing a little research is when they're new are they worth trading like ipos is there some excitement about them when they first come out i think that's worth that's worthy this would be a momentum type of market, obviously not set up now, just kind of going straight up. EOS we talked about. This one's a little funky looking now. With that funky bar, if it didn't have that, this big tail higher in here, we're just kind of tailing down to the 30, but it's it's kind of, it's all over the place. And one thing I talked about yesterday, uh, last week at Bandcamp, <laughs> uh, is that I really hadn't wrapped my head fully around the volume of these things. So far, I've been able to get all the trades off that I want to, but at some point we'll have to probably pay attention to volume and some of these uh, shy coins. But if you're trading Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, and a lot of these other ones, they've got pretty darn good volume. So nothing going on here, but as you look back in time on some of these, you should be able to see some Landry Light pullbacks and other patterns. So let's find you something. Let's find something. Let's find something to buy tonight. Any questions on any of this stuff while you're doing it? While I'm doing this, I should say. Lawrence says, hi, Dave, hope all is well. Markets are challenging at the moment, but the IPOs are still the silver lining. Yeah, absolutely. It has been a little, the the sharp sell-offs followed by the immediate reversals. The the intraday trend following has been really tough last few days. You know, that's where my shoulders are tight tonight. Seems like I'm, I'm kind of creaky <laughs> more than normal. And that tells me that uh, don't fight it, just let the market come to you. But yeah, that's been it's been tough. The the first 15 minute bars have been kind of sucking you in and or, or trying to suck you in. And then when you miss when you don't take the trade and it comes right back in, you feel pretty good. And then of course the next move it, it kind of sucks you in. There's a new one, LPT, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> I 
So Litecoin trending nicely in here. You can see it's red, meaning that I have a stop in place. I've not hit my initial profit target. And it looks really good against the Bitcoin. Maybe I should have bought it against the Bitcoin as opposed to against the dollar. That one's trending, but not really set up. That one is really super nice breakout, not really set up. That's a new one. Don't try to buy these things when they're brand new. I would at least apply the IPO rules. Let them stick, uh, stay, um, let them be out for about a week or so. That one's trending nicely, could pull back soon. That one looks okay. Let's see if we can find a tiny Elvis market in here with a huge trend. Okay, which one? Which way is this one headed? Mostly down. Okay, we're not gonna do anything there. As a trend falling more on, I'm nearly done. And then we need to jump into the markets real quick. And then any questions that you might have, we could certainly address those. But as you can see, especially as we're getting into some of these ones that are kind of going straight down, if they don't go up, don't buy them. Okay, I tell you what, let's, let me buy some of this OMG just to show you that I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, bear with me one second. I think it could, I hope I could do it on the fly. Kraken is a little cumbersome sometimes, but I like to trade off the charts. The um, Coinbase is really good for quick trades. OMG. Should probably buy it against Bitcoin, right? Instead of the dollar. Let me just keep it simple and go against the dollar. So where is it? 12.5 now. So basically, I'm just going to buy a market that's going straight up. Now, you can't do this in every market in the world, and it might fail miserably, but I just want to squeeze off a trade and see what happens, okay? And I'm not betting the form. All right, buy at the market. All right, I got filled at 12.51, okay? So let's see what happens. Now, you can't always play this game where you're just going to be buying things going straight up, okay? But right now, a lot of these things are just, are just rocking with docking, right? So, I mean, I literally couldn't pass that up. And then maybe we could do some screen captures and I could show you, you know, mark that down. So I got to fill it at uh, 649.37 on that one. This one I like a lot, not right now, but this one in the past has just been fantastic. The breakouts are fantastic on it. This is SC, Sciacoin, I think is what it is. Look at this perfect Landry Light pullback textbook in nature, okay? Next presentation, I'm doing Landry Light pullbacks. I need to remember this one, grab this chart here. Okay, it took off nicely and then super deep pullback. A little scary to come in and trade it here, but you can see it's done okay since. But this was the this was the mother of all trades back here. And if memory serves, I bought this thing when it was just sub penny or whatever, breaking out. But, you know, like I said, this... Look at these charts, they get you excited about trading. And this doesn't get you excited. <laughs> Come on, man, you ain't a trader. <laughs> Sushi, that's another one of those. I just I can't bottom fish with it, but it's 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 moving, right? That's a new one. So we're almost done. And then we'll, we'll pop into the markets and then we can look at any individual stocks you might want to look at. This TRX could be interesting at times. It was a little extreme back here for that land you like pullback. But so far, it's it's sort of, it's been a little wild and crazy, but it's bounced off that 30 or, or it's gotten back above the 30 and rallied nicely. Nothing to do at this particular point in time. Sideways. That one looks okay. A little bit deeper pullback would be nice, okay? It's a little wide and loose back here, but a little bit deeper pullback, I think it'd be worth a shot. This one's kind of interesting. Uh, the only reason I'm not long is I'm long so many other ones, and I wasn't even sure I'd have room for that one so we got in what at 1252 now it's not always this good i promise you okay so let's go back to that omg i'm watching on another screen over here so i just went in bought this thing at 1252 now it's 1278 okay and i'll screen grab i can't do it on the fly but i'll screen grab the chart from over there and show you 
where I got in. I'll show you next week. Okay, now it's 12, 1282, 1283. Okay, look, look at that tree. It's huge. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, if it was always this easy, you'd never see my fat ass again. Look at that. That's great. Let's take a look at like a 15 minute chart. Let's see what's happening. Now, it takes a leap of faith to do this. And for me, it's just a big old F and game. It's fun at AF. Okay. But I mean, look at this thing 1288. Oh, 1279. All right. Well, maybe I'll get bummed out. Spoke too soon. Okay. But I got to fill at 1252. I'm already in the money fairly nicely. You know, this is this is the what we have right now. This is what's being offered to us. This is why I'm excited about it. Now, here's the thing. Check back often. Okay. I was I was I was feeling this euphoria. So I'm like, I'm gonna talk about altcoins, and that's why I did my stock chart uh, show on that. Especially since they had the uh, altcoins, uh, 150 new altcoins. And then it's like, eh, the market just kind of went lame pretty quick. Now, again, I'm not betting a farm on this, but if I could pick up a few bucks here and there, it's better than the poker eye. And this is where I like to play the annualization game. Well, let's say you make a let's say you make 100 bucks on that uh, OMG trade. That'd be fantastic, right? That'd be good, right? That's if you do that every day, that's 25 grand a year, better than the poker eye, right? I hope to make a lot more, but we'll see. ZEC, that looks pretty good. I'm already long, but it's it's breaking out as you can see. It's tailing off a little bit. So this is your so you kind of get a feel for how it goes when when you're in a momentum kind of market. Again, you know, just start by percent change when you first. This is what I do every night. I'll come in here tonight before bed, take a look at this, and say, okay, am I in some of these uh, high flyers in here? What's the one I just bought? OMG. So let me just put a note on here. I don't have a stop in place. So I'll make it purple. So I just got the OMG, and you know I'll look to flip out some. We'll see what happens. And uh, somebody remind me then the presentation. Well, I'll keep an eye on the screen. We'll uh, we'll see where it is. We'll see what happens. All right, let's pop into let's shift gears here. Let's go back to the stocks, okay? And what I want to do is, as I normally do, let's take a look at the market. Let's see what's going on. And then if you guys want to ask about individual stocks, begin doing so now. I know since we have the Facebook group, we talk about them all day long, so not as much to do. So hopefully we'll get uh, some new people coming into the presentation live. And if you're watching the recording of this, love to have you live. I don't bite. I'd be happy to take a look at your favorite stocks. All right, let's do the... All right, so let's take a look at the S&P 500. S and P 500, the P's as we often call them, look pretty good. As I said a couple of days ago, they had a bit of a double top knockout look to them, where you you kind of make a little flat base or kind of a small minor double top, and then you have a nice little kind of a knockout move. Now this is kind of a small knockout. I'd like to see something much bigger than that, but it did have a, and that's why I said it uh, it had a um, double top knockout look to it. John says, just don't ask about F, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had somebody would come in all the time and ask about F, Ford, and uh, he would always ask, but it was just a, a piece of crap. It was the funniest thing ever. I had to kick, I started kicking him out of the group because he just was not paying attention to the methodology at all. So the P's look okay, up around all time highs, NASDAQ composite, not, not quite as good. We've got this recent little gap here that needs to be, Filled. By the way, all gaps are not filled. I think I talked about that last week. <laughs> it's a window. The window will be closed. No, it won't. No, you don't, Danny. <laughs> Anybody know that reference? Um, NASDAQ Composite, a little bit of a sell-off today. Nice little recovery, but it's a little questionable at this particular moment in time. I wouldn't get too excited just yet. Take a look at a weekly chart. Weekly looks okay, but we do have a minor double top possibly in the works. We don't know if that's gonna be like a double top knockout or the start of something bigger. So you might wanna pull your horns in again. The good thing is, as Laurent Park pointed out, not a whole lot of setups lately and that's fine, okay? But you do have to keep doing your work every week. Am I going in the red here? What do I have? Uh, 1287, still in the green. We'll see what happens by the end. Russell 2000, eh, kind of has a head and shoulders top look to it. I don't trade off of a head and shoulders top directly. If I get a bow tie or some other pattern I trade within a head and shoulders, that's fine. 
the classical technical analysis, I mean, eventually this might be the mother of all head and shoulders tops and it might look like a, a beautiful uh, textbook setup and it'll go in some book on technical analysis. But more often than not, you can't time off of these type of classical patterns. You just have to wait and wait and wait. But if you get a setup within them, that's fine. Energy is coming back from the dead in here. Uh, uh, brand new highs today. Very impressive move in the energies and believe me it was hard holding on to that cpe the one that was in the portfolio i showed a, a few minutes ago up 400 something percent it was up over 500 percent at one point in time kind of hard to just hang on when energies are looking a little dubious but that's what we do we just hang on and let's stop doubt that's all you have to do i know easy said than done metals and mining look at that they got new highs with bigger tiny elvis sneaking out here look at, look at that trend it's huge Gold finally waking up, looking pretty good. Uh, longer term, it's kind of wide and loose. I prefer a bottom in something like gold or some other commodity at major, major, major lows, like 10-year lows or all-time lows, as opposed to high levels like this. But it does look okay as of late. If we start seeing some gold setups, we might take them. Silver waking up too. As you can see, silver's kind of all over the place. The Reddit boys went after it, but they found out the market was much bigger than them really quickly. <laughs> but now it's at multi-month high, so it's starting to look a little bit better, but still wide and loose. The reason I'm showing you those two is that they are, uh, they've been kind of lagging, and metals and mining has gone up without those two. And now that those two are going up, metals and mining is beginning to accelerate higher. 1304 on the OMG. You see how easy trading is? <laughs> God's going to punish me for that one, all right? Hey, y'all might see, y'all might can see me uh, drop an F-bomb live, huh? Banks, look at that. Sleepy old Banks. I've got one in my portfolio. I've been there forever. I think it's EDS. Bored you to death, but I was looking at the open profits, and I'm like, oh, my God, what is what am I in, a biotech or something? It's like it's a bank. <laughs> Sleepy old bank just kind of climbing along. So that's kind of interesting there. Insurance, kind of a sleepy area, too. I guess finance in general doing okay. Let's take a look at drugs. Drugs have been improving as of late. I wouldn't rush out and buy drugs. <laughs> What's that okay? What was a comedian say once? Nancy Reagan, just say no. It's like my mom says, just say no, thank you. <laughs> Biotech not looking quite as good as you can see. It did find a little support at the bottom of its range, but that in and of itself wouldn't make me want to rush out and buy biotech. Retail right at or near all-time highs in here, so that's looking okay. Longer term, let's take a look at the trannies. Trannies are banging out new highs, so trannies looking pretty good. I like to see semiconductors do well, kind of like the you know the transportation is the uh, the Dow theorists like the transports to go up. It's kind of interesting. Everybody kind of poo pooed the transports a few years back, but now it's like transports are pretty important with the economy. How many how many boxes with little smiles on them do you have? We got in, or I should say, we didn't get any in today, but by the time I get back to my house, or go back in the house, I should say, from my office, which is attached, but I have to walk out to get here. Anyway, there's going to be a box in there with a smile on it. It's kind of like um, a buddy of mine works for Paul Plan. I'm like, why the hell would anybody need paper? And he's like, don't you get those boxes every day with a smile on them? It's like, yeah. It's like, we make those boxes. All right. Where do you think that cardboard comes from? If he's watching, he's a cross between Ross Perot and uh, a slow talk at Southern. Actually, very intelligent guy, though. Telecom, banging out some new highs with vigor. So overall, things looking pretty good. One thing I found kind of interesting, you can see bonds for now, at least on a daily basis, are trying to bottom out. There's a big, a lot of fear mongering going on about inflation. And, you know, it's coming sooner or later. And if you look at a weekly chart, you know, if you want to go longer term, and take a look at like a weekly chart. Yeah, bonds are in a lot of trouble. Okay. Rates will be headed higher, but not today and not not recently. It looks like they're trying to bottom out in here. Let's take a look at the dollar real quick. You're wondering why these altcoins are, are hot, or at least some of them. Well, the dollar's going down, okay? It takes more dollars to buy those coins. All right, then. Any questions on anything? Any individual stocks? I know we talked about stocks all day you guys are probably worn out <laughs> uh oh 1301 it's coming back off it hit 1325 a little while ago all right going once 
going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you'd like to watch live, DaveLander.com slash webinar. Webinar, register once, and you should be registered forever. You won't have to re-register each week. We don't talk between now and then. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. I'll see, I think, most everybody here tonight. I'll see you later tonight or tomorrow in the Facebook group. Keep an eye on that OMG and see what happens. All right, everyone, again, have a great night and a great weekend. Thank you so much.